All right, so this is our fish. Uh, this is uh, our representative of the subfile or the phylum uh, Chordata, and more specifically the subphylum Vertebrata. So instead of having a notochord uh, like uh, the cephalochordates, uh, hagfish, or uh, some of the other primitive chordates, this organism has a true vertebral column that has replaced that uh, that notochord. But we'll get into that in a bit. So I'm going to go through external anatomy um, before I go through internal anatomy, kind of like usual. Uh, and so I'll start off with these fins. So we have uh, a rayed uh, dorsal fin and a spinous dorsal fin. The one in front, the one right here, is uh, the spinous dorsal fin. So it's made out of these spines. These are very rigid uh, and are fairly sharp. So this is the spine dorsal fin. Just posterior to it, so just behind it, is the rayed dorsal fin right here. And so this is uh, made out of much more softer or not as rigid material. Uh, and so it has these segmented cartilaginous uh, uh, structures that are supporting this fin. Just behind uh, the dorsal rayed fin is the caudal fin. So this is the fin that's providing the most force uh, in order to move this fish forward. So the entire, uh, well, the majority of the length of this body uh, is just filled with swimming muscle in order to move the caudal peduncle, which is this structure from basically the end of the anal fin or the dorsal fin to the beginning of the caudal fin right here. So this structure right here is the caudal peduncle, and this is going to be attached to that caudal fin, and this entire structure is going to be moving through the water in order to generate some force uh, or some thrust and push this fish forward through the water. The next spot or the next fin uh, that I just mentioned is the anal fin. So this fin right here is the anal fin. Uh, it's just posterior to the anus or the vent, which is right here. So look it up some. That's the anus uh, and the vent. Just anterior or to the front of uh, the anus or vent is the pelvic fin. So these are the pelvic fins. There's a pair of them. There's one on either side. So pelvic fin and pelvic fin right here. To the top, uh, right along the middle line of this fish, is another set of fins. And so this is the pectoral fin, and so this is used in stability, so this fish doesn't just fall over to one side or the other uh, while swimming. There's a bit of other external anatomy that you should know. Uh, you have an eye here, you have a mouth um, right here. You have incurrent and excurrent nares right here at the tip of the, uh, the head. So these are chemosensory, uh, so water is going to be flowing into the incurrent nair here. It's going to be carrying with it pheromones and hormones and all that good stuff. And then it's going to be uh, being almost red by cells within these canals. It's then going to be flowing out of uh, the excurrent nair right here. The other uh, uh, sensory organ that is present on the outside of the body, not including the eye, is this lateral line system right here. So this line of scales uh, has por or have pores in them which allow water to flow into it. And so each one of those pores has a cell or a, uh, uh, a canal with a cell at the end of it. And that cell will have a flagella that's just sitting there. So as a pressure wave or a bow wave hits this lateral line, it's then directed into these uh, canals and into the cells where it then moves that flagella. If that flagella is moving, the fish can interpret that as a nervous uh, imp impulse that's sent to the brain, and it can react accordingly. This structure right here is the opercula, uh, perculum, or the opercal flap, and so this is going to be covering the gills, so if we just tilt this fish upwards, uh, this structure right here uh, are the gills. So this fish is going to be uh, opening its mouth, where it's going to be flowing in, carrying uh, oxygen. It's going to close its mouth and depress its tongue, which is going to force that water out the only other exit, which is past this operculum. So, the only other bit of external anatomy that I went over uh, were these scales. So these scales are uh, going to be making this fish more uh, hydrodynamic. So think aerodynamic, but just underwater. So to do this, these scales are uh, overlapping each other. So if I run the teasing needle down one way, it's very smooth. If I run it the other way, it starts to catch on scales and it's not very smooth at all. These scales also are helping to pr protect this fish from ectoparasites. 
such as mites or uh, some some other worms. So this scale, these scales are made out of keratin, uh, which is the same material or protein that makes up your fingernails or your hair. So that's about it for uh, external anatomy uh, of a fish. I mean, there's much, much more, but that's about as much detail as I went into during lab. So we made a, a couple of cuts uh, for this fish. So the first cut was using the scissors. And so what we did is we removed this chunk of flesh uh, from this cavity right here. And then we also cut upwards uh, around the length of the fish uh, from the top of the head, basically back towards the end of that caudal peduncle. What we were trying to do is we were trying to show uh, the swimming muscle right here, as well as the uh, internal organs uh, in the small cavity here. So the reason why all these swimming muscles take up so much space is that uh, water is something like 80% more dense than air, so it takes a lot of force to swim through it. I mean, you probably know this, but it, it's, it's very tiring to swim uh, in a pool for a long time because basically you're, you're not used to swimming through that dense, uh, that dense uh, fluid. So all this muscle here is swimming muscle. So it's going to be co uh, controlling the movement of this latter half of the body uh, in order to move this uh, caudal peduncle and this caudal fin in order to generate some thrust to move this fish forward. So the swimming muscle isn't just one big muscle, it's actually many, many segments of muscles that are connected to each other. Uh, and so these segments are called myomeres. If I look a little bit, if you all look a little bit closer at this fish, I don't know how well that worked, if it ever focuses. There. So each one of these segments is separated by a thin white uh, line, which you can see here. If I separate another segment, you can see it there. So each of these structures is a segment, and so these myomeres are uh, kind of look like a an M or uh, an upside down W. So they're uh, connecting along this middle part right here, and then they have a hypaxial region and an epaxial region. The epaxial region is going to be dorsally located, so it's going to be along this top structure uh, here. So this is the epaxial half right here. Just on the ventral side, you have hypaxial region of the myomeres. So this, uh, this dark line is separating the two. You have the hypaxial uh, ventrally located, and then you have the epaxial dorsally located. All right, so that's swimming muscle. Um, there is a lot of muscle in the rest of the head and underneath this chin and uh, located down here in order to control the movement of the uh, jaw. Uh, and the uh, pharyngeal teeth, which I'll get into in a little bit. So when we expose this cavity, we're seeing uh, a lot of internal organs. Um, and so the major one that you see right here, it looks kind of like a, a leaf or a triangle and it's dark gray. And so this is the liver. So this is gonna be storing glycogen or lipids uh, for this fish. If we move that liver out of the way, we see this really shiny silver structure right here. So this is the swim bladder. This is going to be filled with air when this fish needs to be buoyant. It's going to be uh, losing air when this fish needs to sink down to the, uh, to the bottom. So this is acting basically like a buoyancy or like a, a weight belt for this fish. So this uh, swim bladder is surrounded by capillary beds. If this fish needs to increase its buoyancy, so it, say it's swimming up towards the surface, it's going to release air uh, from its bloodstream into the swim bladder. If it needs to sink, uh, it's going to reduce its buoyancy, so it's going to uh, uh, dissolve the air that's in the swim bladder into those capillary beds and into the bloodstream from there. So that's the swim bladder right here. This is the liver. If we move the liver upwards in the opposite direction, we can see uh, the gonads. So this uh, entire tan mass are the ovaries. So these are uh, this is a female fish. This fish is producing eggs. And so this uh, very large organ is supporting those hundreds of thousands of eggs that this fish will produce. 
if we move those ovaries uh, off to the side some, we can start to see the digestive tract. So right here we have the stomach. So the stomach is kind of cone shaped uh, and I'll show you the, uh, one of the other dissections I made where you can see the stomach and the intestine much more clearly. So this is that dissection. As you can see, this is the stomach right here, and so it's really weirdly shaped. So uh, you have food entering uh, from the mouth, it's traveling down this cavity, and then it's entering through uh, the esophagus right here. Get that junk out of the way. So this is the esophagus, it's then entering into the stomach, where it then kind of makes this uh, U-turn, uh, comes back the way it came, and then enters the intestine from here. So this is the entrance to the intestine. And then this right here is that uh, intestine coiling around. So it kind of makes one loop and then ends up here. So this is the anus. This is where that intestine is leading out to. All food waste is going to be traveling down uh, to that anus here. What has been removed in this specimen are the pyloric CK. So if I bring back the other uh, fish, one of my other fish, here, there are these thin tubes that have these small yellow uh, material wrapped around them. And so these are pyloric CK. Uh, this is uh, creating digestive enzymes, uh, increasing surface area of the intestine. So these are multi-functional. So that's the digestive system, well, at least part of it. Right here, you have the heart. So this is that dark black structure. This is going to be pumping blood to the gills where it becomes oxygenated and releases CO2 and ammonia and then flows up to the length of the body, runs down this, uh, this artery, comes back through a vein, and then the cycle repeats itself. These gills are uh, made up of several different structures themselves. So you have uh, a gill arch, which is a C in the middle right here. On the inside of that C, you have these uh, rigid structures that look like spines, and so these are called gill rakers. On the outside of that gill arch are these, uh, these feather-like structures called gill filaments. So if we were to take a microscope and look at one of these gill filaments uh, under that microscope, uh, you would be able to see that these filaments are not just thin uh, strands, they're actually, uh, they look like feathers. So they're increasing surface area, and each one of these branches are called gill lamellae. So on the inside of this, uh, this fish, uh, of this mouth, if we look in between these gills, we can see what we call pharyngeal teeth. So if I just spread it open a little bit, try to not rip it totally apart, we can see uh, several teeth palettes. So we have a pharyngeal tooth, if I could just get my finger, perfect. So we have a pharyngeal tooth here and right here, and a third one right at the base. So it's gonna be acting, or this, uh, these teeth palates, these pharyngeal teeth are gonna be acting like a gastric mill, and it's gonna be grinding up food before it enters the esophagus right here. So uh, food is going, well, Great perch is not a, uh, a passive fish, it's not going to be eating other fish. Instead, it's eating arthropods uh, such as crustaceans, crabs, uh, and also bivalve, so clams. So it doesn't have uh, like dentary uh, teeth uh, up front, instead, it has those tooth plates uh, in the back right by the pharyngeal gills. So here it has a lot of muscle uh, in the back of the head and under the chin so it can grind uh, those teeth plates together and basically crush any uh, food uh, items that they've eaten before it enters the esophagus here. I've popped this uh, swim bladder so that you can see another uh, organ. So this structure right here is the kidney. So this is uh, collecting metabolic waste and then turning it into urine. That urine is then traveling through this dark line that you see here, where it then will meet out at the uh, vent. So the gonads in the form of uh, ovaries, uh, these ureters, and the intestine are all meeting uh, or exiting the body 
at this anus uh, and vent right at the end right here. This structure, this really dark colored structure right here, this is the spleen, so this sits right underneath that stomach and it acts as a, uh, a filter for the blood and it's also where uh, erythrocytes or red blood cells are created. So this is the spleen right here underneath the stomach. Um, what else? Here you have a tongue. So the way these fish breathe uh, is they open up their mouth like this, water flows in, they close their mouth and while this uh, cavity is still full of water, since water is incompressible, they just uh, depress the bottom of their mouth, uh, raising this tongue, uh, reducing the volume of, uh, available inside the buccal cavity. And so water will then flow out uh, of that opercular flap out past these gills. And so it's going to be carrying oxygenated water past all these capillary beds inside these gill lamellae and these gill filaments. So that's how uh, these fish uh, are breathing. They're just passing water uh, over their gills. So uh, fish like sharks uh, don't have uh, the ability or they don't breathe or pump water like this. They have ram, feed, uh, ram uh, breathing. Basically, they just keep their mouth open. And as they keep their mouth open, they're swimming forward and water is just passing their gills that way. Uh, I think that's about it for fish dissection. Um, so you have hypaxial muscle and epaxial muscle, I'm sorry, epaxial muscle and hypaxial muscle that are all connected uh, to the vertebral column right here. Um, you have those myomeres, the, that swimming muscle that's segmented. You have the swim bladder, stomach, uh, intestine, heart, gills, tongue, eye, mouth, Anus, ureter, and kidneys. So, lots of different uh, bits of dissection.